this must be kind of wild, isn't it? Imagine being Burt Kreischer and imagine being Tom Segura, right? And imagine being these guys and imagine being in a position where you have all the money in the world or all the money someone could need. You have kids who are now fully grown, a wife that, you know, does her own thing and seems to not need you for the most part. And you're a bit free in your career to kind of do whatever you need. And you still have doubts about it. The reason why I say this is because there's a particular clip I'm going to play for you from Two Bears, One Cave. The recent episode just came out today. It's pretty sad. I'm not going to lie. It's kind of depressing because Bert Kreischer is contemplating his life and figuring aloud whether or not he should move to France, specifically Lille, to go and hang out and chill out and have a good time. And Tom is trying to convince him, but he's obviously not, you know, He's obviously not going to do it, but he's basically acting like he's going to do it. And this particular video or clip I'm going to play you is one of the reasons why I despise giving people advice. It's one of the, my little pet peeves because people just waste your time. Sometimes they want to just, you know, speak about things aloud, but they're not really going to follow through. And you're just going to end up wasting your words because they're not ready or because they don't want to do it. But they just want to seem like they're trying to make a change. So let me um, play this clip for you um, of Bert Kreischer pontificating about moving away. Like, what are we doing with our fucking lives? Like, what, why don't you just live your dream? Why don't you just wrap it up, be done, and just... You don't, you don't have to do that much more touring and you can go move to Nice. I would love to. Why don't you? I would love to. Why well, don't I? Your kids are in college. Yeah, why don't I? Why don't I just go fucking move to a foreign country for a month? Live in a foreign country for a month. You have nine months... You know, it's funny. Do you remember in the episode where he was like, oh, I hate rich dads. I hate rich dads who have the ability to do what they want and be rich dads and be present, right? But he's basically a rich dad. He's also in a, in a special position because he had his kids relatively early in his career. So now that he's becoming a lot more famous later in life, he can actually do the things that a lot of people can't do because they had kids later. Because if you have kids later... If you make it later, most likely you have to have kids later, right? Because you're thinking about how you're going to support them. But he was fortunate that he had a TV job in the beginning. Even though he was comedy, wasn't going where it was needed to. He was on the Discovery Channel. He's probably making good money. He comes from money anyway. So he could have a family then and support them with that TV channel job and maybe money from his family, whatever it may be, or other thing he was doing. But now he's in a position where he's literally touring the world, sold out shows, even if it's a show packed with his friends, he's still got a show that people want to see. They like what he does. And he's got the breathing room. He's got the runway to actually go on a way and travel and see the world but he doesn't want to he's just thinking about it to kind of seem like you know he's thinking about it and to seem like he's trying to do things differently and mix things up and stuff but he's not really ready for it he can't do that he can he can barely stay off his phone for a couple of days you think he's going to up stick and move to fucking france never happening coming up i have nine months i could do three months in a foreign country yeah well, and just disappear but you realize you can get a job totally really do that start doing st it's so funny i automatically start how do i make money over there like i, no, I, I no. go what are you gonna do i would like i'd like to be in france south of france um in a vineyard yeah but you could you could start big up qualia exactly guy is still in a college mentality trying to do a semester abroad i would argue that he doesn't even need to go anywhere he needs to change his mindset. He needs to start appreciating what he already has. He could probably go hiking somewhere. He could probably go to the great outdoors. He could probably go to a silent retreat. He could probably just go without using his phone for a bit. Stay off social media. All those things would really help him. And even, you know, the obvious thing, you know, maybe a week off not, of, of not drinking, maybe a month of not drinking outside of Sober October. Those things actually help him apart from picking you know it's like that person who thinks if they move somewhere everything's going to change no it's like when you move to college and you, you know maybe you got bullied in high school you don't just do the same things that you were doing in high school when you go to college you at least try to reinvent yourself a little bit to give yourself a shot and not being bullied again you don't just do your same thing you did before because you never know maybe you and the way you act and the, what, what you say and how you carry yourself maybe that um encouraged some people to bully you it wasn't obviously your fault but you have to kind of change a little bit about yourself. So you can't just expect to go somewhere and the scenario, the scenery, the place itself will change you because we're humans. You will end up reverting back to type eventually. Start like growing vegetables. 
you know, like I mean, can't grow them in three fucking months. Well, whatever you can start. Like, have the guy plant them now for yeah, me. Yeah, here you go. You can <laughs> I'll look. send Peter over to Europe. Start. And I like how notice in this exchange, people. Tom keeps telling him, "Why don't you? Why don't you?" Tom is really like enthusiastic about it because that's his friend. He's actually, you know what? You'd actually benefit from that. That's actually not a bad idea. Tom's being quite sincere, and notice Bert basically make a joke out of everything, not really acknowledge it, you know, not really commit to it. So he doesn't really want to do it. He's just being fanciful and trying to speak about it because it makes him sound like he's cultured. But Tom is actually being like, "Hey, man, you should go." Maybe give me a break, you know. <laughs> Plant my vegetables. But you could, you could, uh, you could learn a craft. Like you could learn a trade, like a cobbler. Sure. Or like a a language too. I, if you're in a village somewhere, they're not going to speak English well. What's the easiest European language to learn? Bert is so rich, right? Bert is so rich, he could probably afford to take somebody with him. He could probably afford to take somebody. You know, like when you go traveling. You, don't, you kind of have to immerse yourself in the environment you're in. I know when I went traveling around Central America, Honduras and shit, Nicaragua and stuff, it was kind of hard to navigate because, you know, when I went back then, there wasn't a lot of people that spoke English in some of the smaller towns and villages that you went to, especially outside of the main strip and shit. And you had to basically get very acquainted very quickly with the language, with the mannerisms, with how people carry themselves and stuff. And it's kind of exhausting in itself. It's a bit tiring. You have to be actively kind of keeping abreast of those type of things. And you're kind of on your own, right? Until you maybe find another tourist. Bert's lucky in that he could kind of cheat. He could bring somebody with him to make it all, to make it easy. So you have someone to talk to. Because that's something people don't mention. When you go traveling, there were times when I went traveling and I legitimately spent i don't know six hours not talking to a single person that's something people don't realize when you go traveling to a smaller country or to a country where not everyone speaks english you might go somewhere and just be like you know you've got no one to talk to because you can't speak the language or you can't speak it well conversationally um you're a bit embarrassed you're a bit shy whatever so his traveling would be sick because he could go where he wants he could stay where he wants. He could be free from the burden or the anxiety of how much money he's going to make, how much money he's going to spend. Money's not really a problem. And he could also bring somebody just to hang. That is so amazing. Whether it's his wife, a friend, a fellow comedian, that would be so fucking cool. I would love to be able to speak French. Well, then why even Italian's care? badass. Yeah. Italian's badass. I already know Spanish pretty good. Yeah, right. Dutch, the language that are easiest to learn, most Germanic languages. Oh, I'd love to. Do I? What if I just disappear and I don't tell anyone where I went? Not even Leanne or my girls. Mm -hmm. I just. Again, he doesn't need to do that. He could just do that to his to everybody else except for his family. That's one thing I have to give Ari and even Joe Rogan a lot of credit for. But a lot of these guys are kind of boring. I don't know if it's because America is really awesome. Maybe America is really awesome. But I find these guys kind of boring. Like, why make that kind of money? Why work this amazing job where you speak into a mic, you know, three hours per week? You have a studio where people set up the equipment for you and press record. You don't have to design the thumbnails. You don't have to do the timestamps. You don't have to set up the equipment. You don't even have to fucking organize the fucking topics. Everything gets done for you. And you just sit there and talk shit with your friend and make tons of money. Why wouldn't you take the free time to do some fun shit? I don't know, go race some cars at a track day. Go traveling, go hiking, go skiing, whatever, something. But these guys are kind of boring. They don't really do much, which is probably why they spend so much time touring because they find that probably, that's probably their recreational things. They find touring fun and you also get a chance to make money. So you get to, you know, increase your fame, touch your fans, quote unquote, and you get to make some cash. But you have to kind of give Ari Shafir and Joe Rogan a lot of credit. At least they go traveling. Ari will just disappear. Won't post anything won't be on social, won't upload the podcast and just go. And then next time you see him, he's recording some video and the backdrop is some like crazy city somewhere. Like, oh shit, he went away. Or Joe Rogan would do it sometimes. He'll just go traveling, come back. And then by the time he's back, he's, you know, he's probably been back two weeks and you mention, oh shit, I went to Thailand. You know, the rest of these guys are kind of boring, kind of boring, given what they have. They should be taking way more advantage of it. You'd think, especially the ones who have like teenage children. You actually got an opportunity to leave and to do your thing while you're still relatively quote unquote young. Start a new family. 
That's another thing you could do in a few months. What are the strip clubs like in Europe, do you think? I don't know. I mean, there's certain countries that are notorious, right? Oh, what am I talking about? I've seen live sex shows in fucking Amsterdam. Those yeah. are fucking crazy. They don't have that here. No. They have fucking... You know, we, we almost did flying dildos again. I told you that story. On the sex shows, do the guys finish? Because I figure they can't do it I don't it know. That I finish so fast, I leave. Really? <laughs> Do you get, are you allowed to J your D there? No. Oh. It's a weird thing. You sit in a theater. Mm -hmm. It's like a theater, like a small, it's like, like uh, do you remember the alt rooms? Yeah. And the Has he got a skin conditioner? Is this just booze? Has he got a skin conditioner? Or is that just booze? The color of his arms compared to his face. And it's not like he wears like long CTs. He's always got his top off, you know, whether he's on stage or outside and about. He's a Florida man, so he likes to, you know, bare his chest. But the difference in skin tone from his face to his arms is pretty distinctive, isn't it? His face is so red. I wonder if he's got a little skin condition. Maybe he's got um, like some sort of eczema or something as well that makes it look worse. And then he scratches it or something. Maybe. Because he's so red. He's so red compared to his arms. Damn. <laughs> over by Franklin yeah it's like that like you sit and you just watch two people come out and fuck does the guy come out hard yeah one time I, one time he didn't come out hard and he was working it up and we started making fun of his dick we were like yeah I told it in the story but uh I've seen I've seen live sex shows I've never I've never been with a prostitute and I would and I regret not doing it now right like Weird thing for a married man on a podcast to admit in it, but this is just like one of those type of things that they do. Content over everything. Content over everything. You want to go viral and stuff, but it's a weird thing to admit on a podcast as a married man in your 50s. What? <laughs> okay. Because a younger man, I should have tried it. Yeah. I should have tried it. Yeah. Like I, I, I would never recommend that to a young guy, but I look back and I go, out of so someone who likes to live life and have life experiences, yeah. when I was single, I should have done it. I but he was only single when he was a young guy. Didn't he meet Liana pretty young, pretty like, I think he met her in his like mid early 30s, isn't it, or something? So when else would he have, so he does recommend it for a young guy, but then he was only single before he met Leanne. So it's like, who else? What? Anyway, whatever. Let's not think it too closely. Definitely should have done it. We, no, you got three months in Europe. I mean, that's... Yeah. <laughs> Big up, Koya. 100%. Bert would ask a hooker, will you miss me? One million percent, you know, he'd say that. Will you miss me? Will you miss me? Will you miss me? Like, fucking hell. Like, he'd probably be one of the only fucking Johns that would have to get escorted out of a hooker's room because he's talked too much. <laughs> not for physical abuse, not for being intimidating or violent or whatever. He'd probably get escorted out of a bro out of a brothel or a prostitute's room because he spoke too much. Like, fuck you, no, shut up. <laughs> you get banned from a fucking prostitute's place because you spoke too much. Incredible. Well, you really, why don't you really commit to that? I'm serious. It's not that crazy. He's being serious, right? He's giving him that face. He's being a friend. Maybe he's doing that thing that, you know, when, you're, when your missus isn't sure about meeting up her friends. Oh, I'm not too sure if I should go meet my friends. And you're like, no, you should definitely go, man. That's one of your close friends, isn't it? She'd love to see you. He'd love to see you. And you're saying it because you want them to leave the house and you want the house yourself, right? You're like, nah, babe, honestly, you should really go, man. What, what's her name again? Oh, yeah, you always talk about her, man. You always say how you miss her. You don't get to hang out so often. You should really go. <laughs> that's what Tom's doing Tom's doing that version of it you should really go to honestly you should go it'll be so good for you it'd be so good for you man away from the podcast away from me away from the studio away from any you know you don't like black people so you know you want to be away from him and Bert obviously he's just you know he's just talking for talking sake he doesn't want to really go why don't you just move to yeah. the south of France for three months it's not that crazy I could do that and then I can I can just zoom in for like segments on two bears. Imagine caring about two bears one cave when you move to the south of France. Just go out there and record a podcast a week or something if you need to catch up your fans or to get that itch going. But why would you want to zoom in from France for two bears one cave? It's not that important of a show. He could easily just cycle through his own guests and have you know special guests to cover you. 
just forget about the pod forget even about content forget updating the fans just go there unplug eat some food drink some wine get to meet the locals maybe go up and do some spots at random clubs and don't tell anybody about it that might be fun but again documentation recording wanting to be seen internet social media the unfortunate reality of Bert is that he actually enjoys going on the road and being on tour constantly that makes him feel good he likes making money from stand-up clearly he likes having attention he likes people looking at him listening to him and shit he could never ever unplug in that way even though it would probably be good for him he could probably will never do it never happening or I'll just send we'll get an Italian comic to move over here an Italian comic? Yeah. Why? You're going to France. I'll go to France. A French comic. We had a yeah. French comic. <laughs> yeah. French comic to move over here and I'll do his podcast and he could do mine. Hey, Tommy. Is that not French? Mm-mm. Uh, Tommy. Better. Hey, Tommy. Oh, les dis so du bears one k ba. That's a good French accent. It's really unfortunate because if anybody could benefit from going on, from going traveling, Often just disconnecting from the podcast world, from the content world, from stand up, from marketing, social media is Burt Kreischer. If somebody could benefit from that, benefit from not being performative, he would benefit from it. Benefit from not being a people pleaser, he would benefit from it. Benefit from not being an attention whore, a fame whore, a social climber, he'd benefit from it. But he doesn't even need to go anywhere. I would argue he doesn't even he doesn't even need to go anywhere. He doesn't need to travel. 10 plus hours to another country to disconnect he could do it where he's at he could easily just drive somewhere get a plane somewhere go hiking stay in a resort stay in some lodge somewhere no phones and just reconnect with himself maybe read some books watch some films hang out with some people whatever and do it that way but he never will because the unfortunate reality is that he actually enjoy. he's one of the rare people that actually enjoys being in a hamster wheel most of us are trying to figure out a way not in a wings of redemption way where we're all afraid of hard work. Most of us are trying to figure out the optimal way for us to get the most out of life doing what we enjoy. But if we do what we enjoy, we end up working all the time because we love it. But Bert's the type of person who actually enjoys the work because it keeps his brain busy. Because as somebody mentioned in the chat who said, here, big up Chris Mack, he's been in a midlife crisis since college. So he doesn't want to sit with his thoughts because we know what he does when he sits with his thoughts. Big up podcast cringe for highlighting it he has a lot of dark thought, dark thoughts about death and his own mortality and shit he's always thinking of how he'll be remembered will people remember him so he knows that if he sits with himself if he quietens his mind those thoughts are going to come flooding in he doesn't want to deal with that so that's why he's always on the road always come you know walking out of fucking pools with a speedo on you know, sharing embarrassing stories about his family and everything else and making content and doing stand-up and taking off his T-shirt again and again and again and again and again because it distracts him from, you know, the shit going on in his brain that he should be addressing, really. And then obviously trying to numb the pain, quieting the voices by drinking. Because we've all done that before, right? We've all been in a slump. I know I have. And you're just drunk, so you just can just black out and then wake up the next day and it's the next day type of thing. You're going through the kind of like a mini depression arc. But I don't know, man. It's just, this guy is way too old for this. This guy is way too old for this, in my opinion. He's way too old for this, way too grown. He should get he should get over this and get past this period sooner rather than later. It's kind of embarrassing to be like a 50 plus year old man and you're still not sure about yourself. You're still all over the place. You're asking for questions and therapy, but then you're not taking any of the advice. That's also the most excruciating thing about him. It's a constant turning every podcast into a therapy session, but then not taking any of that advice. It's like the friend in your social group who has an abusive relationship or who's in an abusive relationship and they keep running to you for advice or to help or for solitude and they don't seem to heed the lessons or to take your advice. After a while, you're going to get bored. You're going to get annoyed. You're going to get pissed off. You're like, you know what? No more. Unless you're willing to change, I'm not going to sit here and just, you know, listen to your lectures, give you a lecture, you know, have give you my shoulder to cry on when you're not going to make any change. And that's the same with him. It must be a little bit exhausting, a little bit exhausting to be his friend because he's always in a situation, he's always going through something, but then he refuses to address it. When really, if he actually did decide to move to the south of France, it would actually be so beneficial for him. But will he do it? Probably not. Probably, 
probably not. Cool, man. Big up everybody in the stream chat. I appreciate you. Wagwan Omar Ramos. Wagwan Omar Ramos. I see you there. What's going on? Tom wants better out of his life. Exactly. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. Big up uh, Fur Campos. Whenever I need a cry, I think about beer dying and think about what if Bert were... <laughs> <laughs> I thought you said beer. You said Bert. That that was one of the most hilarious things ever. Man, everyone was thinking it would be so much fun if Bert was here. It's like, what? The unfortunate thing about death. The unfortunate thing about death, and we've seen it before. The unfortunate thing about death, especially with some friends. Sometimes, the cold heart truth is that, especially when you're a destructive person, some people actually think it's a good thing that you pass and they move on very quickly i've seen it before in my social groups where somebody's been very self-destructive you know haven't hasn't been maybe heeding the lessons or taking the signs of life and trying to change themselves and then something tragic happens and they pass some people are actually glad that you've gone because you're less of a burden on their life they don't have to constantly think and worry about you and your safety you know they're kind of happy it's over so I think he should be careful. Like not everybody's gonna be that distraught when it does or if it does happen or when it does happen. You know, some people might be like, you know what? It's for the best. <laughs> you know, that's the unfortunate thing. Or the other thing that's really cold is that people just move on very quickly. People just move on very, very quickly. Sometimes scaring sometimes very scaringly quickly. It's like, ugh, you know? You're like, damn man, you you guys really really have moved on fast is that yeah that's what happens in the real world people just like you know cool all right you know that happened what can you do 